Welcome to this week's Wellcamp Chapel. My name is Mufasa. It's been a couple weeks. I was asked to share a special video message for the students at Trinity in Tinley Park. And so I thought with a little modification that I would share the message with you as well. You know, last year and the year before, uh, I would have come out and visited in person today. Uh, I still want to give you that message, and so I'm out here at Wall Camp sharing a little bit of uh, our location with you today. The way I normally do my chapels is we sing a couple songs, we have a brief meditation and a prayer, followed by a couple more songs. Uh, today's meditation comes from Matthew 6, verse 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The first one is called, Lord, I lift your name on high. And there are actions to this, so feel free to join in. Uh, I hope you will, but if you don't, that's okay. The actions are, he came from heaven to earth to show the way, from the earth to the cross, my debts to pay, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. also has actions because there's a lot of words and yet the actions kind of help you remember which words come next. It goes like this, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be safe from my enemies. The Lord liveth, one clap, and blessed be the rock, two claps, and may the God of our salvation make a cross, be exalted, and you do that twice. I will call upon the Lord. to be praised so shall I be safe from my enemies the Lord liveth and blessed be the rock and may the God of our salvation be exalted the Lord liveth and blessed be the rock and may the God of our salvation be exalted He is risen. 
Jesus is risen indeed. It's so great to be worshiping here with you today uh, on this Wednesday just after Easter. Now, as we think about last week, uh, we experienced the triumphal entry of Jesus a couple Sundays ago, Palm Sunday. Uh, Jesus was riding into Jerusalem, and the disciples started putting palm branches and their coats down on the road in front of him as he's riding on this donkey. And the people start shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, oh save us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And he goes and he teaches in the temple and we hear stories about uh, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and they're trying to trick him in his words. Uh, We see him weeping over Jerusalem because it's going to be destroyed uh, several years from then. because of the people's disbelief. We, we see all of these different stories. Uh, there's miracles, there's healing. There's all this instruction that the Jewish leaders don't seem to pay attention to. But the people are saying, this is God's son, this is Messiah, this is the one we have been waiting for. He's been promised since Adam and Eve, and now he is here. And then we reach Thursday. We reach Passover, and Jesus celebrates the Passover meal, the time when uh, they celebrated Moses bringing the people out of Israel by God's mighty hand. And they go to a garden to pray, and they stand watch, and the disciples fall asleep, but Jesus keeps praying, and he says, God, the thing that's about to happen is too much. Take this away from me, if it's your will, but if not, let your will be done, not mine. And he goes back, and the disciples are sleeping. He says, wake up. The hour is at hand. What's about to happen is happening. And Judas comes with uh, a group of soldiers, a group of of armed men, uh, probably from the temple, right? And they they arrest Jesus, and Judas gives him a kiss, and he says, what are you doing here? Why are you doing this? And the disciples draw their swords. They try to fight, and Jesus says, put them away. I could call down angels, uh, 10,000 angels if I wanted to. But this has to happen to fulfill God's plan. The disciples run away. The soldiers take him to the high priest. The high priest takes him to Pilate and they says, this man uh, is worthy of death. This man is blasphemed. He's talked against God. He calls himself God. He needs to be killed by our laws, but we can't do it. So you, as the Roman representative, need to do it. And Pilate uh, talks to Jesus and Jesus doesn't say anything. And he says, don't you know that I have power to do this? And Jesus says, well, you only have the power that God gives you. And Pilate goes to them and says, well, I find nothing wrong with this guy. I find nothing wrong with Jesus. Uh, I'm just going to let him go. And they say, no, you can't do that. So he finds out, well, Jesus is from Nazareth. So he's under Herod's domain. So he sends him to King Herod. King Herod questions him, uh, tries to get him to perform a miracle. But when nothing happens, uh, he sends him back to Pilate. And we're told on that day, the two of them became friends. Pilate brings Jesus before the Jews, uh, along with another prisoner. He says, here is uh, the king of the Jews. Uh, I find nothing wrong with him. I've beaten him. Uh, We've done all of these things to him. He's certainly been punished for whatever crime he did, which I can't find. Uh, I'm going to release him. And the Jews say, no, you can't do that. Release Barabbas. Release this, this rebel and this traitor instead. And so Pilate does. He releases Barabbas. But then he says, but what should I do with your king? And they say, crucify him. Kill him. And finally, Pontius Pilate uh, calls for a bowl of water. He washes his hands and says, I am clean. I'm innocent of this. You guys have made this decision. You go and do this. And the soldiers take Jesus out. And they nail him onto a cross with two other thieves. And he's hanging there. And there's people watching him. And some of them are crying. And others are teasing and laughing. And they're saying, you said you're the son of God. Save yourself. Even the, the one thief on the cross says, save yourself and us too. And then Jesus dies. And we know from reading uh, the prophecies and reading the stories that this is God's son. How can God die? And yet Jesus looks up to heaven and the sky is dark and black. It's like God himself turned away from his son. And he says, why have you forsaken me? And then he says, it's finished. My work is done. I've paid uh, for the sin. I've paid for the the death and the, the anxiety and the rebellion against God. All of it is now taken care of. It is finished. And he bows his head and he dies. And there's an earthquake, and there's like graves are opening, and people come back to life. And the, there's a curtain in the temple that separated the Holy of Holies, where God was said to live, from the rest of the temple, from the rest of Israel. And the curtain tears in half. And they go to Pilate, and they say, well, he's dead. Can we bury him now? And Pilate says, he's dead already? That was fast. Okay, go for it. And so they bury Jesus. They take him down. Uh, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus take him, and they go and bury him in a new tomb. They seal it with a giant stone. 
And the disciples go back to the upper room where they celebrated Passover with Jesus. And they're hiding and they're scared that they're going to be the next ones arrested. And they don't know what to do because Jesus, their leader, their friend, has been taken from them. And early Sunday morning, a couple of the women go out uh, to the tomb to finish the burial process. And they find the stone rolled away. The guards are laying around as if they were dead. And an angel stands there saying, why are you looking for the dead here? Jesus is risen. Go and tell his friends. Now about this time, you may start thinking, Mufasa, I've already heard the story. We just spent the last 40 days of Lent talking about this story. We celebrated Easter. We had our candy. We went to church. Uh, we, we've had our celebrations and it's been awesome. But now we're back to school. We're back to our routines. What happens next? In Matthew, Jesus said, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. If you're like me, you probably went Easter egg hunting on Sunday. Uh, you went searching, trying to find these little colored plastic uh, eggs with stuff inside of them, maybe candy, maybe other things. And you go searching and sometimes they're easy to find and sometimes they're hidden very uh, difficult depending on your age and who happens to be hiding them. The Bible says that we should seek after God's word. We should seek after God as if he's the greatest treasure that we can have in our lives. King David even says, I've hidden your words in my heart so that I do not sin against you. And so we tell the story of Easter, not just because it's that time of year again, but we tell the story to remind ourselves of all the great things that God's done for us. Uh, how uh, even though we mess up and we make mistakes and we uh, may not understand why God loves us, we, we can go back and remember that God loves us so much that he didn't want us to be punished for our sins, for the bad things we do. He didn't want us to spend eternity away from him. Instead, he was willing to give his own son, Jesus, so that he could pay for our sin, he could pay for the bad things we do, and so that we could be made uh, righteous, we could be made holy with God, and so that we could spend time with him, not just in heaven, although we look forward to that, but here today, right now, we can live with God, and God comes and lives with us. And the story of Easter is just one of the many stories that we find in this Bible. It's almost like uh, God's given us a book full of treasure that we have to go and seek out and find. Uh, Solomon even says in Proverbs that the wise man goes and seeks out knowledge, seeks out wisdom as if it was treasure, as if it was fine gold. And as I read through this book, as I look for this treasure, uh, every once in a while I find these random, uh, strange stories that don't seem to fit anywhere. But then as you read, all of a sudden you see that God is working through all of these different amazing details to tell his story, to uh, make his work happen, to bring other people to faith in God, to bring you to faith. And then to give you the strength and the courage to go and tell your friends. There's random stories like uh, Moses is out in the desert with the people of Israel and they disobey God. So he sends a swarm of serpents to go and start biting people and people are dying and getting sick and they start crying out to Moses. They say, what do we do? We sin against God, forgive us. And God says, well, make a serpent out of bronze, hold it up on a pole or on a staff so that everyone can look up at it. And anyone who just looks at this thing will be healed. And they do and they're saved. And you think, well, that's a random story. You read uh, how there's two people in the Bible who never actually died. We have Enoch in Genesis, uh, is a friend of God, walks with God, and then suddenly God takes him with him to heaven. Uh, then you have Elijah, one of the prophets, a man just like you and me, a normal person who God did amazing things, and then God uh, sends a chariot of fire to come down, and he gets in this chariot, and he rides off into heaven. He never dies. You hear random promises like God telling Eve that one of her children, her descendants, is going to defeat the serpent that tricked them into disobeying God. You see a story of Abraham taking his son Isaac up to a hill three, four days journey away. And they climb this hill and they go up and they don't have anything to sacrifice. And Isaac says, what are we going to do? We don't have a sacrifice. And Abraham says, God will provide the lamb. And they get up there and Abraham is about to give his only son and God says, stop Abraham, don't do this. I see that you love me more than you love even your son. And he provides a sacrifice. He provides a lamb in Isaac's place. And they have their sacrifice and they worship and they go back home. And there's countless other stories, countless other promises in the Bible of what's going to happen. 
And as we look at the story of Jesus, what do we find? We find him at a rooftop with Nicodemus. And Nicodemus says, I don't understand the things you're telling me about God. And Jesus says, remember the serpent that Moses held up in the desert. And all people had to do was look at it and believe that God would save them. And he did. In the same way, Jesus says, talking about himself, the Son of Man also has to be lifted up on a pole, or in his case, a cross, and everyone who looks on him, who believes in him, will be saved. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believes in him will not die, but will have everlasting life. This is the story that we find that verse in. We find Jesus on a mountain several weeks before uh, the triumphal entry. And Moses and Elijah suddenly appear with him. Moses who died, but then who God buried uh, somewhere where the Israelites wouldn't be able to find him. And Elijah, a man who never died. And they stand there and they talk to Jesus and they tell him, here's all the things that are going to happen to you. We see Jesus carrying a cross of wood. Much like Isaac carried uh, the, the wood for the fire for his sacrifice. Up a mountain, possibly even the same mountain or very similar one. Mount Moriah, Mount Calvary. Very similar locations. But in this case, God didn't provide a substitute for Jesus. God says, don't kill Isaac. I'll provide a substitute. I'll provide this other lamb. But for Jesus, but Jesus was the sacrifice. He was the one that was to pay for you and me so that we don't have to pay for our own sins, for, for our own bad things that we do, for the things that would anger God and cause him to, to not be with us. And we're told in Hebrews that when Abraham went to sacrifice his son, he knew that God would somehow bring him back to life. And on Easter Sunday, God raises his own son, Jesus, back to life. Jesus shows us by coming back to life that he's conquered sin, he's conquered the devil, he's conquered death itself. And just as he came back to life, he promises that we will do the same. And so we find all of these treasures. We find uh, these things that speak to us when we're sad, when we're hurting, uh, when, we're, when we're excited and we, we just don't have the words to, to praise God for what he's done. And we find a call from Jesus right before he goes back to heaven. He says, go, tell this story to others, make disciples of all the nations, telling them, of what God has done for you. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Teach them everything that I have taught you. And I will be with you always. And so we find within this treasure not just great stories, great uh, things to learn and think about, great ideas for how to live our lives, but we find that God himself speaks to us through these words. So I ask you again, where is your treasure? Because our treasure isn't found in an Easter basket with uh, candy eggs and uh, toys that will eventually break and uh, things that we might eventually grow out of and not think about anymore. But we have a treasure that lasts forever and we have a command to take this, to learn from it, to hide it in our heart and to share that treasure with others. Will you pray with me, please? I'm going to say a quick prayer and then close with the Lord's Prayer if you would like to join me in that. Lord, we thank you for this day, the chance to study your word, to find uh, all the great treasures that you've hidden inside of this. Uh, from the stories of Abraham and Isaac, to uh, Elijah never dying, to the story of a serpent uh, made out of bronze that somehow was able to heal people through your power. And then served as an example of Jesus being lifted up and healing us as well. We praise you for the amazing things that you did for us 2,000 years ago on the first Easter. We praise you for those things that you do for us each day. And we ask that you give us the desire, the longing to go and seek out your word, to find all of the treasures you have for us. But not just to hold those in our heart, to keep them hidden, but to share those with others as well. Our classmates, our friends, other people that we meet. May we show other people with our lives and the way that we love others that you are real and that you live in us and that you can live in those people as well. May you walk with us today and every day. Amen. Join me in the Lord's Prayer, please. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, just as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Than gold. Lord, you are more 
more beautiful than diamonds Nothing I desire compares with you Lord, you are more precious than silver Lord, you are more costly than gold Lord, you are more beautiful than diamonds Nothing I desire compares with you treasure is, there your heart will be also. May God teach you his words, may he fill you with his love, and may he lead you to the best treasure of all, his son. Thanks for joining me. Go in peace and have a great day.